I will be answering question 4.3 from the October 2014 exam. The question is, explain how monetary policy can be used to combat demand pull inflation. In order to answer this question, we first need to understand what causes demand pull inflation. Demand pull inflation occurs when there's an increase in the aggregate demand for goods and services while aggregate supply remains unchanged. This excess demand is effectively pulling up the prices of goods and services in the economy. It is this increase in the general price level that we refer to as inflation. So now that we know that it is an increase in aggregate demand that caused demand pull inflation, we know that in order to combat it, authorities need to reduce aggregate demand. They can do this in various ways. Firstly, they can use contractionary monetary policy, contractionary fiscal policy, or a combination of both. The question specifically refers to monetary policy, therefore we will look at the effect of a contractionary monetary policy on the price level in the economy. When the central bank applies a contractionary monetary policy, it will increase the repo rate. This increase in the repo rate will then increase the cost of lending for commercial banks from the central bank. This will then increase the market interest rate in the economy. We can represent this using a chain of events as follows. A increase in the repo rate will lead to a increase in the market interest rate. When the market interest rate increases, bank loans for both consumption and investment spending will decline. Therefore, consumption spending declines and investment spending declines. This decline in consumption spending and investment spending will therefore lead to a decline in aggregate spending. We can look at this decline in aggregate spending using a simple Keynesian model. Aggregate spending is on your vertical axis and total production and income will be on your horizontal axis. We need the 45 degree line to determine the equilibrium position where aggregate spending is equal to total production and income. We'll start with our initial position When there's a decrease in aggregate spending, the aggregate spending curve will shift downwards. Okay. We can see that this decrease in aggregate spending has resulted in a decrease in total production and income. The reason for this is that firms will experience an unexpected increase in their inventory when aggregate spending declines. So they will respond by reducing their production. In the simple Keynesian model, prices are assumed to be fixed. So we cannot use this model to look at the result of a contractionary monetary policy on the price level in the economy. For that, we need to look at the ADAS curve where prices are flexible. On your vertical axis, we have prices, and on your horizontal axis, total production and income. We have your aggregate supply curve. Aggregate supply and aggregate spending should not be confused. And we have our aggregate demand curve with our initial equilibrium position. A decline in aggregate spending will lead to a decline in aggregate demand. This will be illustrated by a leftward shift of the AD curve. This can be illustrated as follows. As we can see, firms respond in the same way by reducing their production. But in this model, prices are flexible, so they will also decrease their prices when there is a decrease in aggregate demand. It is this decrease in the price level that we call a decrease in the inflation rate. Therefore, a decrease in aggregate demand leads to a decrease in the price level and a 
decrease in total production and income. Thus, we can see we have answered the question of how monetary policy can be used to combat demand pull inflation in the economy. Now, if we want to look at mark allocation for this question, the question did not ask you to draw any diagrams. This is just for explanatory purposes. Your marks will come from your chain of events. You can either write this as a chain of events or write it out explaining the various linkages. You would be given one mark for identifying that a contractionary monetary policy is needed and that this will result in an increase in the market interest rate. Another mark for identifying that an increase in the market interest rate will lead to a decrease in consumption spending and a decrease in investment spending. A third mark for identifying that a decrease in consumption spending and investment spending will result in a decrease in aggregate spending and aggregate demand. And finally, for our conclusion, that total production and income will decrease, and so will the price level.